Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Meet Firebase, where you get to meet the Googlers that make Firebase happen. My name is Doug Stevenson, and on the show with me today is the famous Frank Van Pufflin. Frank. Hey Doug, how are you? For, I'm good, thanks for joining me on the show. Thanks for having so, me. So, what is your role with the Firebase team? Ooh, that's always interesting. I often say that I'm a Firebase engineer at Google. Uh, officially, I'm a developer programs engineer, which means that I have to write code and libraries and things like that. But unofficially, I do everything else, essentially. Everything so, else. <laughs> yeah, so I go to events. I answer a lot of questions on Stack Overflow. And um, I also help organize certain events. Hmm. You've been with the Firebase team for quite some time now. Mm -hmm. Tell me about that. Well, actually, I started using Firebase five years ago when it was in beta for the first time. Then started answering some questions on Stack Overflow about it. And then someday, uh, well, Andrew Lee, one of the founders, was like commenting on my on my answer and said, "Great answer, Frank!" And it's like, "Yay!" <laughs> I got noticed. Uh, yeah, and, <laughs> uh, right. And then a few months later, my phone rang, and James Templin was like, "Hey, we like what you're doing. Uh, we think you should do more of that. How do you feel about joining the team?" Ah, so, okay. and that's right. One thing led to another, and then I I joined the team. It's an interesting way to to get on board. Yeah, and it's right. It shows that actually there is like also potential uh, uh, value in in answering questions beyond just uh, just helping the people that you're helping. I mean, you could make a career out of this. Mm, yeah, you certainly could. <laughs> You've mentioned that you love to help people out there. I actually I, I love to do the same. Uh, one of the places we go, and you mentioned this earlier, is Stack Overflow. Right, that's a great place to ask programming questions. Mm -hmm. Both you and I do this. You probably more than myself. <laughs> I've mostly uh, been doing it longer. I we've think. been doing it longer. Yeah, I've been doing this for about a couple of years now. I just crossed 21,000 points, so nice. that's not bad, right? Not bad. Uh, well, but what are you at now? I mean, that's yes. my number. I think <laughs> dwarfs in comparison to yours. I think I was on uh, 164,000 this morning. Yeah. Okay, but I'm also one of those weird people, right? I know my Stack Overflow ID. Uh, I've memorized that one because I type it so often, uh -huh. and I pretty much can tell you what. Right when we were actually coming into the studio, we were chatting about an answer on Stack Overflow. Right, mm -hmm. this is that's what we I, do. <laughs> yeah, no, it's literally one of my favorite things to do, uh, because right, you see all the diversity of developers using Firebase, and, and right, they all we all go to Stack Overflow if we have a question. Same for me, and yeah, so that means that I also get to see everyone. I really yeah. like that. Yeah, you like it so much. You have so many points. Where does that put you in the all-time ranking? On Stack Overflow, because they, they they do a lot, so it's very I won't say competitive, but there's a lot of incentive to do well, right? And part of mm -hmm. this is it's a leaderboard, yep. and you can see where everyone is uh, on the week, month, quarter, and year, yeah. and all time. Yeah, I'm not sure where I am on the all time, but for the year, I am somewhere in the top twenty uh, overall. So this is worldwide, not just Firebase. Mm -hmm. It's any question, right? And, and there's a lot of programming questions out there oh, across yeah, all sure. of uh, yeah. all of computer science. So it's kind of funny. You've said uh, you 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 feel like you're not very good at answering questions, which is funny because that's what you do really well. <laughs> so what, why do you feel like that? Like what's, what's, what's going on in your mind that makes you feel like you don't, you, you're not very good at it from time no. to time? I do actually, uh, I think I'm pretty, pretty decent, which is like a Dutch level of compliment. <laughs> right. uh, quite high praise for a Dutchie. But at answering uh, Firebase questions or technical questions in general, it's questions outside of technology where I'm normally like, oh, uh, don't know, why would you care about that? But I heard that you might have prepared a few questions outside of technology, so we'll, we'll see how I do <laughs> we'll on see. those. We'll see. But uh, so if, if you if you feel like you're not very good at something, how do you improve, right? Because you you know you, there's a certain amount of humility in mm -hmm. saying I'm not very good. But there's on the other side, it, you know, like I when I started answering questions on Stack Overflow, I was I was okay at it, and then I realized there's a there's a way of phrasing things, there's a yeah. way of constructing an answer that's better. Uh, so in a very very general sense, how do you feel like you improve ah. yourself? A lot of that is actually repetition. So, um, uh, I've been doing this for, for Firebase about five years now, I guess, on Stack Overflow. And a lot of the problems that developers encounter are still pretty much the same, right? Uh, dealing with asynchronous uh, APIs mm -hmm. will never change. It will forever be a problem for people that are new to it. Mm -hmm. um, there's not a lot we can fix about it in the product, because if we could, that's what we would do. So what, what you actually see is that I am essentially constantly improving my answer, right? So the first few answers were probably like not very good. But then you find something where where the developer actually is sort of like understanding what you what you're what you're explaining, and then you just keep optimizing over that. Now jumping out of tech a little uh -huh. bit, uh, on an earlier show I spoke with John Burge with the predictions team, yeah. and I found out he's into retro games. Ah, I'm cool. into retro games. 
obviously I talk about that a lot. You are too, yes, but I in am. particular, you are a huge fan of pinball. I am, actually. So tell yes. me about that. Why pinball? I have no idea. I think it started when probably I was a kid, like seven or, or eight maybe, went on vacation to, to right, France with my parents and then found a pinball machine, right? And just had my allowance and essentially would throw that in the pinball machine every day. And really learn to enjoy the combination of the mechanical into electrical um, and pure physics. So it was like slightly computerish, but not really. And of course, that really changed uh, through the decades, right? Pinballs have evolved a lot. Oh, yeah, yeah. And, right, and, and just growing along with those, trying to understand how things work, but still having the essentially constant fighting gravity uh, of a pinball machine that I really like. So. Yeah, so you've been playing pinball for a long time, yeah. but you've also been working with technology for a long mm -hmm. time. So I'm curious to know, what was the first computer you ever used to write a line of code? Ooh, that's a tricky one. I'm looking on your shirt, of course. <laughs> yeah, it so. could be one of these. Yeah, if, you're, no, actually, if you're looking yes, at home, is. there's a, a variety of old classic home computers. It's likely one of the first two. So I think I wrote my first code on a Commodore. It might have been a VIC-20. Otherwise, it was a 64. And this was in the local mall, right? I would go there on Saturdays and yeah, write code. Yeah, they had yeah. those. Yeah, it used to be that, and for those of you who don't know this, uh, back in the 80s, home computers were treated sort of like regular merchandise, and they'd be out for yeah. you to play, right? And so you'd sit there and type in a program in a computer right yep. there yeah, where yeah, they're yeah. being sold. I think I might still know some of the poke locations of a Commodore 64 <laughs> to change colors and things like that. Yeah, um, yeah. The first one I owned was an Atari, an Atari 600 XL. I have fond memories of that. I wasn't necessarily a real developer back then, so no, I didn't nobody write was. <laughs> no, so I was typing the games from these magazines. From books and magazines, yeah, yeah and typing then, programs. But yeah. I hardly made any like changes, which is really a shame because in hindsight I wish. And I recently started looking at like are these books available online, and I found one. And I've uh, on on some of these like long flights, I've been trying to make a basic interpreter for one of these. Mm. It's surprisingly difficult. So I sort of write this. This happens in like two hour sprints that happen every month or so. So not a lot of progress, but it's really fun to do. So ah, so you're kind of making an old an emulator uh, or, uh, interpreter for yeah. basic. You know what my biggest problem has been. Handling asynchronous input. So we're back to the <laughs> one, we're two, back three to asynchronous. Yeah, yep. it's always always a thorn yep. in the side of uh, developers. Is, yeah. so. <laughs> For me, it was the Apple II. I think that was ah, the first cool. one I used. And then my neighbors gave me a uh, what was it? Texas Instruments TI 994A. Mm -hmm. I think it had like nice. like 4K of memory or something in yep. a cartridge, and I saved my programs on cassette. <laughs> it's <laughs> interesting. You really see the split here between your Europe, uh, uh, European and an American uh, uh, teenager, I guess. Because, yeah, yeah. Uh, but we right. had very similar experiences. Yeah, the, true. The, yeah, the yeah, programs yeah. on books and magazines. Yeah, was oh, definitely. I love that something I that I that. love. Yeah. Yeah. Things have changed a lot since then. We've gotten to the point where now a bunch of people can all type code into different computers at the same time, mm -hmm. sharing data in a Firebase project, all projected yep. on a big screen, yeah. or as you like to say, live coding. Mm -hmm. So tell me, tell, how, how did that come to be, this whole Ooh. idea that you can do live coding on multiple platforms and make a talk, like a session out oh, of it? Oh, that's a good one. Um, so when I joined Firebase, right before that, I had been like an engineer for 20 plus years and just working on, on code. Uh, had done public speaking, but not, nothing big. Uh, and then at Firebase, right, they told me that I was going to be in developer relations and I needed to become like this speaker. And uh, right, terrifying at first. So I started looking at what has everyone else been doing at Firebase. And they all said, oh, we just live code a web app. It's, it's easy. And they love it. And it's like, OK, let's see what they've been doing. So I started doing that, right? And the first time, you're terrified because you have to really type something. And, and, yeah. it, and what if something just, goes wrong, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's <And> embarrassing. <laughs> it turns out, actually, it's actually one of the things that, that the developers in the room actually love, right? Because it shows mm -hmm. that, that it's not necessarily as rehearsed as, as some other talks might be. Mm -hmm. Now, so I started doing that. Um, and then I very much remember I was the first one in Firebase to then do an Android version of that talk. It was in DroidCon Boston. And um, right then, writing a complete app in like an hour or something, right? That's what you have. And this is uh, from File New Project. Oh, really? So it, you're yeah. starting with a clean yeah. and blank slate, yep. like just the scaffolding yeah. of a new project. Yeah, and I love doing that. Uh, what it turned out is that I was actually teaching people uh, more about Android development than about Firebase development at some point. But <laughs> well, that's helpful than Android. Exactly. Right? So still not wrong. Um, and from that, actually, then we write, we got IO uh, last year, 2016, when we were launching the, right, the new and improved Firebase. And we had proposed to do a live coding talk with a group of, of Firebasers. And then we were like, yeah, sitting in a room uh, with Mike McDonald, who some of you might know. It's like, OK, what are we going to do, right? And it's like, well, it's IO. We need to do some one better. So right, we're going to uh, live code multiple apps right, for multiple platforms uh, on stage. And 
we weren't really sure what to do. And then it's like, right, multiple apps, but yeah, we're going to have like a time problem. And then we looked at each other, and it's like literally like, we're going to write them at the same time. So we essentially got up, walked out of the room, because we were done. Except that it takes a lot of work and a lot of practice to get that life, that parallel life coding working. So that took a lot of a lot of effort, not necessarily for the story crafting, because to be honest, we had been doing these types of life coding demos for for years with Firebase, sure. but for getting everything aligned across the platforms. There's a lot of work that goes into that, and also getting all the speakers right to have the right pacing that you want. So it's it's really uh, never underestimate the work that it takes. But I love seeing the result. I was really proud because at uh, the Firebase Summit in Amsterdam, right, was one of the first times that I wasn't in, in the Zero to App talk. And I loved seeing what, what the team uh, did there. It was a really good talk. They did a great job. So. Well, yeah, Kat Fang was on the show earlier. And she said uh -huh. it was maybe one of her most viewed videos ever. So yeah. Something like how many, I don't know, oh, millions the, of views or yeah, something like that. The one from like iOS last year, yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That is, uh, I think, is probably the most watched uh, Firebase video. It was also probably the first time that a lot of uh, people saw uh, this level of live coding. And I think, actually, it's probably a really good explanation of, of a few of the Firebase products that we have. So still highly recommend that you check it out. Yeah, yeah. So definitely do that. Go to YouTube. Uh, we'll have a link in the description below so you can get right to that. So definitely check that out if you haven't already. Yeah. Cool. I'd like to thank you for being on the show, Frank. Sure. It was great chatting with you. Same here. And uh, be sure to stay tuned right here to the Firebase channel on YouTube for more great video content. We have more episodes of Meet Firebase coming uh, with people who do things like Frank and do uh, additional things. So like we have engineers coming, we have uh, other folks in DevRel. So definitely stay tuned here. Subscribe if you haven't already to get notified of new content. And I'll see you here next time. Thanks for watching.